Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking a little break from the last of my Christmas crafts to bring you this magical card. I'm not gonna lie, this one was ridiculously hard to take photos of, so it's definitely going to be one worth watching because I feel like you just can't see it all in these photos. I really need to look up how to take good photos of slimline cards. So for today's card, I'm using the stitched slimline die. These little mugs from the Woodland Critter Huggers Christmas set, I don't know, what happened i just looked up and saw these on my desk and thought oh my gosh these are going to be perfect for those lanterns in this scene all i had to do was trim their handles off now i really hope you've watched this movie that i have taken this scene from and if you know the scene i'm talking about it is stunning it is one of the most beautiful parts of the whole movie there's so much purple in the sky and those gold floating lanterns are just adorable I've wanted to make this card for quite a while, but using a regular size card just doesn't leave enough room above the little characters to have all the floating pieces and the cute little lanterns. So now that I have these slimline dies, I'm so excited to finally make this one. For my background, I'm using some seedless preserves and dusty concord and just blending them together. And then down the bottom, I'm going to be using some Salty Ocean and Faded Jeans for my water area of the card. I don't really define the difference between them. I do have the little boat that kind of separates things. But I didn't want to make any real defined edges in this. I just wanted it all to flow together. I'm just using some Wilted Violet on the very edges there to darken them up. And now I'm going to quickly do that water. I love this movie so much. I can't even tell you how many times I've watched it. I feel like there was another movie that came out around the same time and the songs in that one were really popular and this one kind of got a little bit overlooked in comparison. It's still a ridiculously popular movie, but it is so beautiful. And if you haven't seen it yet, I really hope you do watch it. It is surprisingly funny and the story is just really cute. So here I am just blending the sky and the water together. It's not quite perfectly seamless, but it does the job. For the little characters on the front of this card, I'm using the little boy and girl from the Screen Time stamp set. I'm stamping them out with my jellyfish ink first. And then I'm going to use my black ink just to mark out the things that I don't want to edit. I'm changing these stamps up quite a lot. So I've got the jellyfish ink to give me an idea of where I need to draw things. And that will fade and hide under all my alcohol marker colouring. But I really wanted to keep their little faces the same. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time editing these so that they look like the little characters that I'm after. To colour in these two, I used pretty much all of my skin tone Copic markers that I own and a few alcohol markers.
before I finish the little white details on this girl's hair, I had some things to add to it. So if you know the scene, you would know that her hair is full of gorgeous flowers. It's also braided, so it's a little bit different, but I wanted to keep those flowers in there. So I'm using this itty bitty flower from the Lawn Fawn Little Bundle stamp set. And I'm using some really vibrant distress inks and stamping them directly onto her hair. I'm then adding little white details to those. Now it was time to get onto what I think is the fun part of this card, working on this background. For this I'm using a super fine gold embossing powder, my embossing ink and a few little tools to help make different shapes. So as you can see I'm using that little ink blending tool, I'm not quite sure what these are called, they're the tiny little foam dabbers. This one didn't have any ink on it and I thought it might make it look like that out of focus bokeh effect that you can do with cameras because there are so many lanterns in this scene a lot of them were like off in the distance and some were up close some were defined and some were blurry so I kind of wanted to capture that with some different tools so I'm also using a cotton tip to do the tiny ones so that they weren't perfect circles they are a little bit more solid I wish I could have gotten them a little bit more spotty like the big ones but it just turned out the way it did I'm also using, of course, my favourite gold watercolour pigments. I'm using the blue yellow for this. I found it seemed to match my embossing powder the best out of all the colours. And then while it was still wet, I just scraped the bottom so that it looked like the lanterns had a bit of a reflection on the water. Now for my boat, again, this was just one of those things where I looked up and saw some dyes and thought, oh my gosh, I think that might actually work. And it was the add-on for the Critter Hugger where you put the gift card and I thought it just looked like the perfect boat shape. So I used that and one of my stitched hillside dies to make this little boat. Now here's something I have not done in quite a while. I'm getting out my shrink plastic and I'm using the little chameleon for this one. All princesses have a sidekick and in this movie it just happened to be an adorable little chameleon. But this stamp is obviously the same size as the princess herself and I had to shrink him down a little bit so that he was more to scale. I did use stays on ink for this and my chameleon cleaned up pretty well. A lot of my stamps that I've used this ink on have stained. It's just one of those inks where if you want to use it, you kind of sacrifice the clear, beautiful stamps. But he, he scrubbed up okay. I'm coloring him in with some Copic markers on the rough side. So I stamped on the shiny side and I'm coloring on the rough side. I find that this does well. I don't know if I'm doing it the right way or not, but it always holds up. And something to remember with shrink plastic is that whatever colours you choose to colour in, it does turn out to be a little bit darker once it shrinks down. And here we go. This is the best part of shrink plastic, obviously. It is the most fun. Shrinking them down to make them so tiny. And just for comparison, here is the finished chameleon near the big chameleon and him right beside the princess. Perfect size. I'm now going to quickly colour in my little lanterns. My boat was super easy to assemble because it was already cut and I kept those little tabs. So I just popped some of my glue on it and stuck it down, pushing it together just a little bit so that it would leave a gap behind it and give it a little bit of dimension. It was at this point where I realised I didn't have a sentiment and I didn't know what kind of card this was going to be. At first I thought maybe a Valentine's Day card, but then I thought, why not a wedding card? I haven't really made any wedding cards, and I thought the sentiment that I found on my desk, again it was right in front of me because I had it out with my little chameleon set, was the little glow flies, or the little firefly set, I think that's what they're called. And the sentiment was, I hope your day glows with happiness, and I thought that would be really sweet for a wedding card. To emphasise the word glows, I decided to cut the letters out with some of my alphabet dies. I coloured them in the same colours that I did the lanterns for a bit of continuity and then I cut the same letters from some black cardstock and layered them. This was to give it a little bit of a shadow and to make the colourful ones stand out a little bit more.
Once they were done, I then popped some foam squares onto the back of them because I really wanted this part of the sentiment to stand out. While I was here, I then also put some foam squares on the backs of my lanterns. There comes a point in every card where I think I better put my double sided tape on the back before I end up loading it up with all those dimensional pieces because I don't want to crush them. So this was the point where I loaded up the back with double sided tape ready to stick onto my card base. I then played around with the arrangement of my letters and stuck them down when I was happy with where I wanted them to go. It was then time to put those cute little lanterns up in the sky. In this scene the two little characters also release one of the lanterns and these little characters from the screen time set look like they should be holding something. So I thought I wanted to make them tiny lanterns as well but I couldn't think of a stamp that could possibly work until I went through my Christmas stamps and found these marshmallows. And they were the perfect size so I just quickly decorated them the same way I did the big ones. Who would have thought tiny marshmallows would have been perfect? <laughs> and here comes that little bundle set again. This time I used the little heart so that it would match the big lanterns. It was a little bit tricky to see that heart so I went over it with my white gel pen so it would stand out. I added a foam square to the back of each of these and then placed it in my little people's hands. I can't believe how cute they look. Just so sweet. At this point I cut and scored my card base. And then it was time to adhere this card front onto my card base. Removing that tape and trying to get it nice and neat. With my jelly roll pen, I decided to add some white details to my lanterns as well, just so that it matched the little ones that my characters were holding. It was then time to sit these little people in the boat. Making sure their legs were tucked into the boat so it looked like they were sitting, but not too far down so that you couldn't see the lanterns. It was also time to find where to put my little chameleon. I was going to have him in the boat but then I thought he'd look cute in the word. Unfortunately it's really hard to take a photo of how cute he looks in there. It looks much better in person. But if I were to make it again I'd probably pop him on the boat. And there we have it, this card is complete. Check out how cute it is especially in the light where you can see that embossing powder shine. I hope you enjoyed this card and my awkward slimline photography. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any ideas for what magical themed cards you'd like me to do next, please pop a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon.